Hi, folks. So we have Laureen. 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 And uh, Jeremy here to talk to us now. Next. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being there last session before lunch. So we're going to talk about a new kind of attack. It's called man user contacts and dealing with secure messengers. So that's good we had this keynote this morning because you saw that yeah, mobile security was quite an issue and was discussing about uh, phishing and especially with secure messengers. So we'll see here in practice how we can use those secure messengers to have a really strong spear phishing weapon. So first, uh, let me introduce you, Laureen. So hi, I'm Laureen. Um, right now I'm freelance, which means I'm looking for work. Um, <laughs> I graduated the HAIG VD, which is an engineering school in Switzerland. And uh, please don't break my website. Yeah, and Jeremy, uh, also working in French-speaking Switzerland, uh, used to code for some security solution to factor on mobile stuff and all that. I'm now a co-chapter leader at OWAS Geneva. I'm really a fan of threat modeling. I uh, think it's really important to do it well. Uh, I do AppSec consulting at my own company now, trying to do less bullshit, thanks to that. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at Securing Apps. So, introduction. So yeah, you see that last two years, uh, there's been a big fuss around secure messaging. Uh, all of those chat applications, they switched uh, to end-to-end -to -end encryption, which is really, really great from a privacy point of view. So uh, which means that, well, now privacy is somehow a requirement. Uh, and it was that strong that you start hearing government here in UK, but also in France, that, yeah, maybe, maybe this could even be bad because they're of terrorists and we are going dark and all that. In the end, what it means is that, yeah, most of the people think that because of that, those uh, applications are unbreakable. And if you want to have a look at crypto, well, you can. So here it's the advanced for chatting in, uh, in signal protocol, yeah. Well, uh, cryptographers have done reviews, so it looks like, yeah, there won't be an obvious flow here, but uh, there is still an HL here. Uh, okay, so there's this big crypto, but you never really authenticate with those app. You don't give any particular ID. So what it does is somehow there's a provisioning via SMS at installation time, and then it connects to your contact phone number and so on, and, and then that's it. And then the magic crypto starts. Uh, is this enough? So I told you I like threat modeling, so I try to do a really simple diagram and really focusing on the mobile app. Why? Because most of the time when we are talking about secure messenger and crypto, we really focus the threat model on the back end and we say uh, we want the back end to be resistant to uh, bad administrators, to NSA asking for logs and uh, dumps and all that. Uh, but if we really focus on mobile, what we see is that, well, mobile OSs are really, really a good progress from a security point of view because everything is sandboxed, uh, so you don't have shared storage, shared network access. But uh, there are two things that are weak points in those secure messengers. First one that has already been exploited, it's been proved that in Iran they use that. The initialization phase is done via SMS, and SMS you have attacks like SS7 stuff where you can easily spoof SMS. So really at provisioning this is not good. But we are not going to talk about that. What we are going to talk about is those contact stuff uh, well, you see here, there's no sandboxing. Uh, so, meaning that any application can, if it has a permission, read and write contacts. So it's super easy because, well, there's an API for that. So, for example, for Android, you have some Java code. So, well, it's been designed for that so that you can easily read and write contacts. To do so, you need some permission. One is read contacts, one is write contacts. Uh, and that's it. So, by design, you have uh, an OS that is sandbox, but you have a data repository that is accessible by any application. Uh, so clearly, I say, huh, well, there is room for, for a side channel attack. And OK, let's call it man in the contacts and see what can happen with that. And I really want to stress 
uh, because you see after the answers from the vendors. Uh, this does not require a rooted device. So I'm really talking about the smartphone of my mom that only downloads from the Google Play Store or App Store, what she just sticks to the official store and all that. So no need of a zero day or whatever. It's really plain standard device, up to date versions. So what, ha what could happen? So okay, so I started to play with WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram because they are the most three famous, and I say, Okay, let's try to play with the system and okay, I create a contact that's called White Space Alice and see what happens in the push notifications. And on the, on the left uh, screenshot, you have the real Alice. In the middle screenshot, you have White Space Alice. And what you see in the notification, in the name of the notification, well, there isn't any difference for the end user because somehow it's stripped down and you don't see it. And even in the conversation view on the, on the right, well, you seem to have two conversations with the same Alice. So this is WhatsApp. With Telegram, you have exactly the same stuff. And with Signal also. The only difference with Signal Android version, you can do screenshots easily. Okay. So clearly, uh, well, there's room for social engineering here because it's it's bad, and so for me, yeah, when I saw that, I was really disappointed, and I, I talked about it at DEF CON Crypto Village, uh, and I said, for me, yeah, first of all, there's a design error, you do all this really good crypto, uh, but, but you use a phone number as an implicit identifier, and so this is bad because you don't have a good entropy and all that, uh, but what's really worse for me is what they decide to do, they call it tofu, so uh, trust on first use. So the first time you chat with a new contact, you don't get a pop-up, you know, like SSH that say, hey, should, do you trust this key or whatever. For usability purpose, they said no. First discussion, the key is improved, uh, is approved automatically, and then only for the next messages, you will check that the key is matching. So you, maybe, maybe you heard about, yes, yeah, some, some complaint that WhatsApp is less secure than Signal because when you change device, one notifies the, other user, but, uh, but not the other messenger. That's true, but uh, really I'm talking about the first message exchange. You don't get any warning or whatever, so first message sent by a new contact, it's automatically considered as trusted, which is a really poor choice. Of course, you see this trick with invisible characters. We are back to those maybe 10, 15 years ago when you could register a domain with some Unicode characters and all that. So we still haven't learned about it. Uh, but really for me, the root cause is below. It's for me that, uh, especially when you read the papers uh, that show that Signal and WhatsApp are really good and all that, uh, they don't really include the end user and the mobile in the threat model. You somehow, they, as I said before, they really focus on backend storage crypto, but you know, this UI mobile stuff, yeah, it's front end, it's, it's not that complex, it's not that sexy, and it's not technically difficult, so yeah, we, we ignore it. Uh, so, and for maybe I say, yeah, social engineering is not a real attack, so yeah, we don't really care about it. And that's something that, uh, interesting. So there's been a formal security uh, analysis of the Signal protocol, you can download a PDF, and what it says, uh, so really the, basic assumptions on it before all the math after that show that signal protocol is really good. It says signal specify a mandatory method for participants to verify each other's identity keys through an out of band channel. But most implementations do not require such verification to take place before messaging can occur. So that's exactly it. So formally it's super robust, but if you have this assumption, but this assumption is totally bypassed by the implementation and the only out of band channel you get is like this four digit SMS code and it doesn't really verify the identity. So clearly uh, we have built something that's really robust but the bootstrap has not been done. So you can forget all that's demonstrated after. For me, it doesn't make sense in practical life. Uh, and then the bonus point, uh, before we go further. Yeah, well, uh, those secure messengers, well, they store their own IDs uh, in the contacts. So meaning what? That 
another application, you, you see that after. Well, normally your sandbox, so let's say uh, you see that, your, your game, and from the game you should not be able to see if WhatsApp or Signal or Telegram is installed. But because Signal and Telegram store the IDs in the contact, you can guess it. And so somehow you can escape this sandbox and they break it by themselves. So clearly when you see that, you say, well, okay, now we can do something that has a significant impact. And for that, and before discussing with vendors, I was trying to convince myself and say, okay, to which extent is it a real issue? So I try to use a really simple evaluation framework. Basically, I say the, the, the risk is the easiness of the attack and the user impact. And for me, I say, okay, when we say easiness of the attack or difficulty the other way around, from a technical point of view, it's going, it's going to be easy. Well, you have an API for that. So if you want to explore that and create fake contacts like white space Alice, yeah, well, just a few lines of Java in Android and you should have it done. Uh, and if you decide to have an, a rogue application that's doing so well, it should get approved without any issue in the Play Store. Why? Well, because you're just using the API. You are not a malware or rootkit trying to have low-level features. You are just using the standard high-level API that lets you do so. From a logistic point of view, it's a bit more difficult. Basically, the issue is, well, you need to convince many users to install this application so that then you, you can trick them. Uh, but it's cheap because you just need one phone number to do so and you will see after. So this is for the yeah, difficulty of attack. And for me, clearly, uh, the user impact is high. You will see that, well, with that, in theory, you can spy thousands of users via those three famous messengers. Uh, so in the end, for me, you get a really high risk in the red, purple area. So with that in mind, I say, okay, now I contact the vendors and ask for feedback. And okay, let's have a chat and discuss about it. Telegram, I couldn't reach them. Even <laughs> tweeting and whatever, there is a security at telegram.org, which is a redirect to DevNull, okay? Then answers from Facebook, which is handling WhatsApp. You have to insist a little to get feedback. I know there is a Facebook booth here. No offense. Uh, so what it says, uh, ultimately an attacker with malware on a, uh, on a device is going to be able to alter on the data. Okay, well, for sure, we are not really talking about malware. Of course, if you install crap on your mobile and your root and your broken, all that, okay, you lose, but we are not talking about that. And the answer, well, they try to protect themselves. WhatsApp conversation remain properly bound to the phone number that the message was sent to. So for them, it's say, okay, you're starting a new conversation, but it's another user, so uh, it's not a real issue, so we do not plan to make any change. Please let us know if you feel we've mis misunderstood something. Uh, yeah, I let them know and never got feedback. Well, that's bad. Uh, Signal, I, I hope I could have a better discussion with Signal because, well, they send it 50 million to WhatsApp, this protocol, and Moxie Marlinsberg is f famous for having done so, so. Again, I had to push a lot to get some feedback. First answer was, well, hey, you know, there are safety numbers. And uh, those safety numbers are exactly, well, well, when the other user is changing device and signal say, okay, the key doesn't match. This is weird. Uh, so yeah, to be able to do an attack, you need to bypass that. And then I answer to Moxie and I say, well, no, I'm talking really about the first message. Well, you are starting a new conversation with a new user. And for that, safety numbers are useless because you have decided to implement Tofu, this trust on first use. And then the answer was, yeah, well, Signal is not designed to protect your device against malware. Well, it's not an antivirus or whatever. Thanks, God, thanks for getting in touch, bye-bye. Okay, so. I was pissed off, let's say it's like that, and say, this is really annoying, you're selling privacy to users. When I talked uh, about that at Vega, so really the first stage, uh, I got uh, really interesting questions from people from China working for big telcos and all that. So I guess they like the idea to do, let's call it monitoring. Uh, and so I say, yeah, okay, so now, uh, rather than just slides, and we should do the attack in practice so that people see 
and then maybe reconsider what's the risk behind. And so that's why I was really happy that Laureline could help me when doing our bachelor's thesis on really implementing the attack, and she will show you great work she did, and hopefully the demo will work. So I implemented the man in the contact attack and released it in the wild, so you can download it. Uh, if you do, I'll see it. Please do it. So yeah, grad students are cheap, so this is a proof of concept, so yeah, it works, but it's not pretty. Um, it was approved on July 2017, and it's still there. So, I mean, it got through the Google antivirus and stuff. And um, yeah, the, the only problem I had with this thing is that uh, the documentation and the contacts API is a nightmare. And sometimes the documentation is not up to date. So, yeah. And behind it, there's a control command and control server that handles both the rock, paper, scissors game and the um, man in the contact aspect. They're like basically married to each other because they, they use the same thing, so I, I, I put them together. Um, and for this demo, we're gonna use the spear phishing scenario. So first, we need to convince uh, random users to download the game. So if I alt tab, does it work? Boop. Okay, this is the command and control server. So you know how many clients you have, how many games are played. No, you don't see anything because uh, PowerPoint, please. Please, thank you, PowerPoint. So you have like <coughs> info on devices connected, etc. Et you have a list of like evil endpoints which we have one of right now. Please load. <laughs> Somebody broke my server. <laughs> oh, wonderful, okay. Let's check out the Google Play page where this loads. So this rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, because playing on rock, paper, scissors is boring. So this is a game, you can play it with your friends. It uses your contact list as friends. So it has a legitimate use for your contact list. Um, it's been verified. It has an awesome rating. I pushed updates. Everything works, fine and dandy. And, ooh, hello, please be bigger. And let's go back to PowerPoint. So, First, PowerPoint, please. Thank you. So first, we need to convince our user to install the game. So if it was a better game, we could like we do viral. It's like Farmville or whatever. You get a thousand soccer moms. So, you know, Play Store. Yeah. And oh, it's there. Please install it. Okay. I said install. God. Murphy hates me. Oh, there's no Wi Fi. But why is there no Wi Fi? Again. We are. Oh, who's that? Oh, because DNS doesn't work. <laughs> so one hour ago, we did the thing and it worked. So yeah, Murphy hates me. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're like, come on, you're magic. Okay, Shazam, boom. No. Oh no, it doesn't work. Please, please work now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it says verified by Play Protect. So you know it's safe. So let's open the thing. It's like, do you like to allow rock, paper, scissors to your contacts? I should like put a, another puppet before, like, I absolutely need your contacts to see who your friends are. If you, if you click deny, it just says no, go away. So, hello? 
loads the thing, creates a profile. Okay, wonderful. If I go to clients, I see, oh, hello, Angel. So here's the full contact, ad contact list. So we have Donald Trump, obviously. She's like his press secretary or something. So there's also secret keys, but you won't need them. And now back to pull point. So we know she's there. We have some interesting. And now we use the automated bone tool to create a duplicate contact for or endpoint. Proceed. Everything goes in the back end, use push notifications. I say, please create, dupl duplicate the contact. And the awesome thing is that the push notification system handles read delivery if it didn't get read, so props to that. And then from my evil attacker, I was like, oh, hello. And then like, check this out, then HTTP. Okay, so you just link to malicious payload, and you go, like, please go. And then from here, oh, but who is it? Is it my boss? Well, no, it's me, Mr. Evil. It says, okay, everything is safe, everything is secured, no problem. It's like the padlock and everything. And then it's not your boss or whatever. You click the link because it's your boss, it's safe, and boom, then you can pivot on like rootkits and whatever. But it's a social engineering vector, which is very interesting. If we check out the contacts, you can see that sometimes it merges, sometimes it doesn't, it does weird things, but if you have a larger contact book, you won't see anything. If you're like me, you have like, even, even with 50 contacts, if there's a duplicate, don't see anything. And if I go there, it's like, oh, there's like two phone numbers and only one for, for WhatsApp. Wunderbar. So yeah, pwned, just like that. And after that, whoop, 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 whoop. And then boom, uh, if you want a live demo, we can do that after that. And I just wiped the database at the end of the day. <laughs> you can trust me on that. It's GDPR compliant. <laughs> no. Thank you. So everything I just did is open source. You can check it out on GitHub. Uh, add it to your apps, pwn people if you want. Um, share this with like lots of people because the response was like a bit wet blanket, something. So yeah, this works. It's scary because if your phone, if, if the guys who make your phone do that, you're done. Just, just go ahead. Okay, so. Yeah, if you really want to be convinced that oh, no, it's not made up or whatever, yeah, we can have a demo after. But yeah, be careful, we will see all your personal contacts. Uh, so what would be the next step for this tool? Uh, okay, so you can do spear phishing, so this is really convincing in kind of corporate environment and all that. But you can do worse. Uh, that's why it's called man in the contacts. You can do really man in the middle, and to be able to do so, so here you see Angel that was hacked, you say that uh, this time you have Angel and you have Bob and both of them download the game and with the evil guy in the middle, you can do a full man in the middle and you see, and what's missing somehow, uh, we haven't time for that yet. We need something that's automating that you receive the message on WhatsApp from Alice and you have to forward it to Bob. So if we want to do it, we could use a web version of a, uh, uh, messenger of, uh, of WhatsApp or Signal, which could be easier than having to play and change um, the mobile app. So in theory, yeah, it could be done, and just with one phone number, you could have thousands of conversations flowing through uh, your command and control server. So in the end, what it means is, well, uh, 
Alice and Bob, and you see there is a, that's why this yellow pop-up that says, yeah, everything is end-to-end -end encrypted, so that's super secure. But in the end, Alice and Bob would be using end-to-end -end encrypted chats, but they would be talking to the wrong person. In the end, so privacy is zero, but they feel that it's really super safe. So this can be a real danger. So because we are at all WASP, and uh, well, let's discuss about mitigations because, well, better to have solution for that. First thing would be, and it's somehow the answers of the vendors, yeah, well, you need to have uh, aware end users. Uh, I say, yeah, you should not let permissions uh, to access contacts to any app, but come on, you ask write permissions as a messenger app to store your own IDs and whatever. So people are used to clicking yes, because otherwise they can't use it. And that's why we did a social game, because you play rock, paper, scissors. If you don't have friends, it's a bit limited, because you can't play. Uh, so that's not the solution. Uh, so m maybe we can blame the mobile OS. They did a great, a great job at sandboxing, but contact was out of scope. Maybe because it was some of the new features. So yeah, we could say that, especially for the right operations on the contact, there should be some sandboxing, or at least you, sh you shouldn't be, as a game, able to write something that looks like a WhatsApp ID or something like that. But I guess it won't be easy for them to design after the spot. And, and we've seen Android, but in theory, it should also work for iOS. Uh, so for me, yeah, if you pretend to be a secure messenger and that's your goal, and you do that on a platform that cannot be 100% secure, you have to find ways to make it more secure. So for me, either you give up this implicit trust on contacts, you do it the old way, and that's what Streamer does and Wire does. Both of them had good feedback uh, from them. So somebody, somehow you have to add the contact by yourself and you do some check operation. Or at least, and for me it's the only thing they have to do in WhatsApp or, and Signal, or Telegram, let's forget, uh, if they want to really reduce this risk, uh, well, what you need is to raise the awareness of the end users in the context of this situation. When you're starting a new conversation with a new contact, it's rare, it's, uh, it's not usual. So uh, it should ring your bell that something is happening. So for that, yeah, if they just put a warning sign rather than a message that say you're super secure, but say, hey, well, because of tofu, between brackets, yeah, you, you just check who you are talking to because you never discussed with this guy before. And maybe with that, the, really the uh, impact of the attack would be lower because people will see that something strange is happening. Uh, so before we have further questions, because I know there would be a debate after that or people who would like to see the demo. Well, end-to-end -end encryption is really good, but uh, it cannot guarantee privacy if you are not sure who you are talking to. Uh, and yeah, sure, there is excellent on crypto behind, uh, but for me, it can, it, it can be worrying from a security point of view because people feel totally safe with that and it's not the case. And for me, you can't have this super good crypto if you don't do this key provisioning stuff. It's written in the formal mathematical description, it's assumptions, and for me, uh, it's a bit awkward that we push this code and we say this is super secure when we haven't yet figured out an out of band channel that enables to exchange those keys securely. So there's still a lot of work to be done there. Uh, so this is for secure messengers. For mobile OS, yeah, well, the security model around contacts is really, really far to open, so we are discussing about uh, chat, uh, but more and more, and even, even, even Apple, they say that, yeah, you would be able to pay, yeah, send money to friends via iMessage. So uh, you imagine what could happen if you send money via, via chat stuff? Which chat does that in, uh, in China? For sure, this kind of attack is efficient to make money. So clearly, if your mobile application needs to have access to contacts, be careful and really do a threat modeling session at the beginning to be sure what you should be worried of. And again, yeah, well, this tool, and thank you again, Laureline, has been open source to show that secure messengers uh, may not be that secure by default and, and that you should not trust them blindly. Uh, and something that uh, 
we tend to forget. Well, you know, you're in Gmail, you send bad links, somehow it ends up in your spam filter, and uh, they can check links and malware attachments and all that. But there, because you are end-to-end -end encrypted, well, backend servers, so WhatsApp signal, they are totally blind. They don't have a clue what's inside the message. Only the endpoint sees it. So they cannot do like statistics and all that and all the good stuff they do. So clearly, uh, because of end-to-end -end encryption, we have a lower security regarding um, the content of the message. So uh, we really have to be careful and I really, especially if you use the desktop versions because uh, you will receive the same message that decrypted by your mobile and then pushed somewhere else. And on your laptop, you clearly don't have all those sandboxes that are protecting you. So it's really something that, yeah, you should be careful with. And now I'll be happy to listen to your questions. Yeah. Do you need a mic or? The only good feedback I had with the Streamer and Wire team, I discussed with them and say, okay, this is something we want to address. And let's say, for example, Streamer, they have a color which says red, orange, or green, depending on how you approve your contact. So by default, it's gonna be orange and you need to check the key manually so that it goes green, so that it's something. But the other ones, uh, it's still, what you see, it's the latest version of WhatsApp. Uh, we could also do the demo with Signal, it's gonna work. Uh, and with the latest Android version and all that, it's still working, so no, they just don't care. Because it's, yeah, well, you've, you've installed malware, you've installed a game, and then that's it, bad for you. Yes? Is this any different than adding an additional phone number to a pre-existing contact? So technically I could add a phone number to the same contact. I could create an entirely, well, I mean duplicating basically creates a new contact. I could create a new contact called USPS uh, customer service, or I could have added a new phone number to the real Donald Trump. Um, the, I mean, you've seen the the, account, the address book does some weird stuff with auto merging, so uh, yeah, you can. I mean, the, um, if we go back to, please work again. If we go back to the CNC server, like duplicating is only one of the many things you can do. I haven't implemented um, editing a contact because it's a, like sending deltas and stuff like would have taken too much time, but you can do it. You can add an entirely new contact. You can just even delete existing contacts on the device. So, I mean, with API access, I asked for read and write permissions, so I could do basically whatever I wanted. And the, the little WhatsApp contact in there, this one, this one I didn't add, so, one of those, I didn't add them. I added the contact and WhatsApp automatically added their own stuff. When the address book changes, WhatsApp does its stuff, scans the contact, oh, you have someone new and it does it. I don't even have to add WhatsApp specific IDs. I add plain on phone numbers and WhatsApp does its stuff. Thanks. Hi. Oh, test. Hi. Uh, wouldn't Android uh, itself uh, possibly change to help mitigate this kind of situation? Uh, because I noticed that the context pop-up that shows up when the app asks for permissions, it only says, do you allow access to the contacts? It doesn't say, do you allow write access or read access? Uh, yeah, yeah. While so it's not the best user experience, uh, it could probably 
in oh, the future. Help. It would help, I think. Um, granularize this control so that users uh, can say, oh, I only want you to look to, to be able to read my contacts or write my contacts. But that, I think, well, I don't think they want to do that because that, uh, that is bad user experience. I mean, even just saying instead of app, app something wants to access your contacts, just say app something wants to read and write to your contacts. Yeah, that, just that having that might prevent at least some of the problems yeah. in the same pop-up. And then at OS level, you could sandbox the contact, but it would probably break a lot of backwards compatibility issues. So I think, I mean, backwards compatibility is a big thing for them, so they are afraid to break stuff. Uh, Apple might do it because they're the king. They are the kings of breaking backwards compatibility. Yeah. So, oh, please don't go to sleep. But yeah, just adding more descript verbals user experience might help at least a portion of users. But I mean, there's always a bigger idiot, and that that's not something you can control. Okay. Thanks. Wonderful. That's it. Thank you.